Luke chapter 7, starting verse 31. And the Lord said, Whereto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And what are they like? They're like children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped to you, and you've not danced. We have mourned to you, and you've not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a devil. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a gluttonous man in a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Bible smack. May God bless the reading of his word. All right. Um, you know, I, I don't really write scripts for a lot of these things. Um, and I just want to kind of tell you what I'm seeing things. This is really about uh, uh, faith. Um, my question is to you, the Christian. Is faith something that is a virtue and valuable to you? And I think it's one of um, the things in this generation is that we see a lack of faith. Now, I was going to um, go over the passage where Jesus heals the woman who had a issue. And, you know, he says, your faith has saved you. But uh, the Lord kind of popped that one open to me. And basically, I think that, you know, when we look at our history now, uh, I'm an American, so uh, my international friends, I, I hope I don't offend when I'm always thinking, you know, American-centrically, but basically, um, I think about American Christianity, and I think about uh, how the political tide has really changed the culture. You know, we had a, you know, people talked about 9-11 era, and then after that, you know, you have the Obama administration. And basically, you know, you see that there is this big revival that was going on among many churches after 9-11, and it continued on. And politically, I know that there was a turning point around 2006. And then um, Barack Obama takes over, and I noticed that spiritually, there's just this big, you know, you know, decline and, you know, the rise of skepticism becomes, you know, very apparent in that generation. You know, what's going on? Um, basically, now, some of this politically is that we have more socialist culture. And since the culture is a bigger government, then the government matters a whole lot more. People are politicized. And, um, you know, whoever's got the power has more power than they ever had before, and they have the ability to influence people. And what happens in those cultures, you know, whenever you have a king, then everybody wants to emulate the king. So you have a culture that, you know, kind of emulates, and I, I think that Obama brought the uh, culture of the skeptic. Um, and so the idol of the skeptic was a fellow who is cool, and coolness is not necessarily good. Uh, the coolness is a lot of times someone who is proud and vain and narcissistic. You know, they don't care about you. And that's really the, the thing. It's uh, I want to watch a pro wrestler, and something funny about pro wrestling is that you know everybody goes, but like here's the real thing about pro wrestling. They can really sense what is going on in a culture at that time. And so there was this uh, wrestler. He wasn't even like really that popular, but he was champion of his federation. He said, you know, I am the champion of the selfish generation. And so you had this selfish culture, the selfish personality, the selfish idol. Okay. And, you know, they do the smirk, you know. Yeah. And basically, that is the idol of this generation, the one who, you know, doesn't care. When they think about freedom, they think about, I can do something selfish, my freedom to be selfish. 
they don't think about my freedom to make the world a better place, okay? They don't think about what is the highest good and virtue possible. Uh, the idea is that everything revolves around me and my ability to be selfish. And, you know, with, um, with the skeptic, he tears down any authority that stands in his way of being a selfish human being. And so that is kind of the theme of this culture. And, you know, we're talking about nationally, internationally. Of course, America affects so many other cultures. And I do see foreigners who uh, will talk about American politics all the time. And they'll kind of give their opinion and stuff. So um, basically, th this is a wide influencing thing. And so now that we have this skeptic idol, um, one thing I've noticed that it does in Christianity is that... Um, you know, on one hand, it does encourage a lot more liberalism, you know, and uh, we see things like the emerging church movement, um, which, I mean, it's just, it's just liberalism. I mean, that's all it is. You know, they'll say, well, the world is getting more liberal, and so if you want to reach them, then you need to become a liberal and get rid of the Bible, you know, or, or mess the Bible up as much as you can, you know, I mean, all this kind of stuff. Um and then it affects things in other ways. And basically, um, I've devoted a lot of my time to apologetics. And I do believe that there's a, a point to it. I believe that there's a need that we need to answer questions, which other generations didn't either, you know, they didn't need to ask or they just, you know, they, they would look down upon it. You know, don't ask any questions, you know, and that's not the point. You know, you need to learn from the Bible. You can't learn from the Bible unless you're asking questions, unless you're seeking. So, yes, we need to be friendly to those who seek and have questions and, you know, be able to do that. But um, the problem has been is that people start to put their faith in things that are not of faith. And... You know, even when it comes to conservatives who would argue conservatively, their apologetics tends to make them more skeptical and tends to follow into a liberal personality. Um, and I'm not going to say I'm totally immune to it myself. But basically, it's just this idea of um, I'll tear down anything in my way. And so this is me... Uh, this is my faith. Now, um, I am very individualistic in my theology. Very individualistic. But at the same time, you do have to remember that uh, you are a member of a family. And so you can't be ultimately, you know, the solo isolated blah, blah, blah. And I've watched, um, I've watched this effect... You know, because even, like, intellectuals get affected by this in their subconscious. And I've seen Christians in theology who are very much my peers. And, um, see, I'm thinking about three of them specifically. Uh, one became an atheist. One became a Jew. And um, the other one is basically starting his own cult. And, you know, these are people who have very much the same experiences that I do. And there is at some point, you know, this kind of getting away thing. And, you know, one was a conservative who just got so skeptical he didn't want to feel like he's a Christian anymore. Uh, one of them is someone who joined another religion's team. And the other one, you know, wandered around and eventually, um, you know, became an atheist just because, you know, his system, uh, I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but, you know, basically his system was to where he didn't find Christianity to be his family anymore. And so you you have this kind of effect on all these different personalities in that same tone. And the problem is, is that it's this idea that to have faith is bad. Now, it is, you know bad or foolish if you have faith in something that's not worth, in, worth having faith in. But having faith in Jesus is a virtue. 
for Jesus to tell you something and you just listen to it and follow what he says and say, I'm going to read the Bible because I want to follow Christ, that's a good thing. Why? Because Jesus is worth believing. And it's good to believe things. And say, well, you know, you're just, you know, having a leap of faith and all this kind of stuff. Well, no. The, the definition of faith has been um, stolen from Christianity. And it was given to a heretic um, named Soren Kierkegaard. And I know there are some positive things Soren Kierkegaard had to say, but generally um, his teaching is heresy. And it's this idea that, like, you believe something is like you imagine it, okay? Um, you know, I'm giving you that faith, and look how great I am for just assuming you exist. You know, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you, and I'm going to put you all the way up to this level, <laughs> okay? And then I'm in from there. And then your kids are kind of like, Mm, yeah, we'll just drop them lower. <laughs> um, it's, it's this idea like, you know, you've done God a favor for believing him. Why? Because you start off not with the assumption of here's God and here's me. Instead, you put yourself on the throne and you say, well, God doesn't really exist, but I'll make him exist in my mind and heart. You, you, you don't have faith. Okay. So that false definition of faith, it even screwed up society because that's the whole communist line. You can have your little first and blah, blah, blah. But what, what is faith? It's belief. If you believe something, then you're saying this is true. You're not saying this is attractive. You're saying this is true. I believe it. Okay? I'm not saying I believe in the seat that I'm seated on. Because I want to do it a favor. <laughs> I say, I don't really believe in it, but I'm going to sit on it. No. I believe this is true. This this chair is truly under me. Okay? I mean, even to a point where, like, you know, you could look at me and you could say, well, I'm going to be watching this a day or two from now, or maybe years. I mean, who knows when you're watching this, but... You could be sitting there and you're thinking, okay, well, he's not sitting on a chair now, or, hey, I only see his shoulders, okay? So, how do I know that he's really sitting on the chair? You know, you'd have to believe, right? Well, I mean, that's that's the whole thing. Um, people get confused. When we talk about faith, faith is, you know, not of sight, because it's not based upon my Humble, little brain, my imagination, my concoctions, my version of logic. No, it's it's based on God's omniscience. And then God putting this all down and setting it down. Okay, so it's me trusting in the authority of God that I think God is smarter than other people. And... Because I believe God is smarter than all other people, I trust him. I trust that he can inspire the Bible. I trust that he can preserve the Bible. Now, I find evidence after the fact. And I've written over 250 blogs, many of which, some of which are even the size of books by themselves. Okay? And I've got reference upon reference upon reference upon reference. And you know what? Um... A lot of times there would be that temptation. And I don't believe in this temptation, but I still have a little devil in my head that will say it. You know, and basically the temptation is, is to kind of say, okay, well, you know, don't tell me it's all about faith. I've got fact after fact after fact after fact after fact. You know, check them out. All right, look at my blog, biblesmack.blogspot.com, and read all of them. Read all 250. Okay? But basically... That's not what makes me believe. And so I shouldn't think that it's going to make you believe. What it does is it does something very unpopular, and it, 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 it shuts down the opposition. 
And when I, you know, engage with somebody, what usually ends up happening is they become angry at me. If I win the argument, they're going to hate me. They don't. There's not really a time where I say, okay, but what about this, this, and this? And they think, oh, you got the right idea. Let's go with it. <laughs> they just don't. Why? Because that is not their faith. And the question really is about what do you have faith in? Um, the new atheist movement, I don't think it's about their faith in evolution. It's just their evolution is serving their real deity. And the real deity is the selfish demigod, the selfish demon, okay? And the cool guy, you know, the, the, this idea of the selfishness, that is their faith. Their, their faith is, yeah, I can be disrespectful and mock this and mock that. I don't even care if God is going to try to hold me accountable. You know, I mean, some of these people, they say, only God can judge me, but really, they're thinking, God must not be able to judge me either. I'm all that. You know, I can just make a cool joke and everything will be fine. It, you know, what, what is that? It's, you know, I think it's laced with drugs. <laughs> Even if it's not like a chemical imbalance, I mean, the thing is, is that it is um, a denial of reality. It is. It's about, let me escape this world to escape my problems. And so they don't have to deal with God because they can mock. But, you know, what happens if God is real? And do you really have faith that all reality just totally makes sense according to science and it has so much intelligence, but it's not intelligence, really just chaotic and whatever, and just chaos and whatever just happened. But since chaos and whatever just happened, then everything is fit neatly into the current scientific understanding of the day. You know, as long as we all agree on it, it must be real. <laughs> um... You know, well, I guess Jesus was real, right? <laughs> Everybody liked it for a while, so he must have was real, right? Yeah. Um, no, reality is not, you know, your community view. It's not political, you know, truth. Okay, that, that's the thing you have to get through your head. Political truth is not reality. What people agree on is just based on their will, you know, they say money makes the world go round. Well, if money makes the world go round, truth doesn't. Okay? Because the truth does not always agree with the will. I mean, you just think about that for a minute. Okay? Is, is the world operating from people who want the truth? No. It's operating by what people want as far as their will and their selfishness. So the selfishness is not based on truth. Because it'll twist the truth as soon as it gets in the way of selfishness. So what what is it? I mean, is this the thing that's going to carry you off into eternity? All right? If there is no God, you know, people talk about Pascal's wager. If there is no God, what happens to you? If there's no God, then nothing about you matters. There's nothing good that you contributed, and there wasn't any good anyway. Um, pain wasn't telling you anything. Everything's chaos and it doesn't matter. So everything about you is utterly worthless. There's utterly nothing. And that's the best you got. There is no heaven for you. There is no good times. All the people that lost you are gone. And they'll never meet you again. And there is no such thing as true love. There is no th such thing as anything. Okay, there's no, no such thing as championships. Okay, and the only thing you're left with is like maybe I ought to kill myself. But then, why even do that? You know, you're just sitting here. You're a bag of crap. That's that. That's that's that message. You know, um, is that what you have faith in? Is your faith in a bag of crap? That, that, that's all there is. I mean, what is crap? It's the, what came from a person. Whatever's in you is going to turn into actual poop. Okay? I mean, except for the corpse. You know, so you're either a, a corpse or poop. 
um, that that's your faith? Is that, is that going to get you through life? Not very long. I mean, what, what really is it? You know, I mean, do you, do you have faith in like some sort of system where you just bounce around from one life to the next, from one life to the next, and one life to the next, and one life to the next? You know, I mean, is that going to get you through life? That your life is just going to turn into something totally different, and you'll never be like worth worth much more than anything. I mean, you know, oh yeah, I'll be the king of the world. Yeah, that's great, and then you're grass off the next day, right? And, you know, that's why Buddhism got invented. What is Buddhism? Buddhism is trying to escape reincarnation. Pfft. It's oblivion. Pfft. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to take your own soul and go, Pfft. All right? That's oblivion. Okay? It's not, it's not faith in some sort of redemption. Is that what's going to get you through? Are you, you think your, your goodness is going to get you through? Are you really a good person? What's really good? I don't know what's really good. Well, then how you know you're going to get there? <laughs> you have to know what's absolutely good to be absolutely good. And if you don't know, what are you doing? I was like, well, I guess. All right, so, you know, you're just gambling with hell. Of course, the thing is, if the you know, truth is what the word of God says, if you're going to go... We're going to go with truth, all right? The Bible's the historical book, all right? Not the mythology, all right? You, you know, the mythology doesn't have all these genealogies to test, okay? So then what do you do? Well, I'm going to trust in let me do some extra Bibles that all have a God that I like. Yeah, but what if uh, God's not listening to you? Or he just throws you in hell. This is why the good news is the good news. Because you have a God who's real. Who's just. Who cares? You say, well, I don't like your God. You know, it's like, what, what do you believe? I don't want to talk about what I believe. I, I don't believe anything. Okay. You get cancer, then what? But I, mm, you hit real life, then what happens? Let's see, you get your arms ripped off. And tell, tell me about, you know, oh yeah, this is going to get me through it. It ain't going to get you through it. It's going to get you dead. And then what? <laughs> hey, I mean, you're not going to stop this. The cycle keeps on going. Okay. But, Jesus? Jesus is somebody who says, hey, I've cared about you the whole time. Hey. I'm telling you the truth. I don't I know you're full of crap. Hey, you you are lost. You're going to hell. And hey, I'm gonna suffer and be tortured a horrible death. And it's going to give you fulfillment of a life that's better than you could ever imagine. Just trust me. Everybody trust me gets saved. But you say, oh, we're the selfish generation. Well, I guess where yourself goes. I mean, have we looked around the whole multiverse? Much less the universe. Or even the solar system. There's stuff we don't know about the solar system. I mean, do you know what's inside the center of Jupiter? Yeah. If we haven't even looked around all this stuff, if we don't know all these things, how can we know there is no God? You, you gotta trust. It's a good thing. Why? Because when you have faith, then you can start to understand other things. But if you don't have faith, then what do you understand? I mean, we're sitting here trying to figure out what a bathroom is right now. Thanks to no faith. We're sitting here arguing color by skin. Whether I got a genitals. Well, is, uh, that's what our academics are studying. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's that's the geniuses. You know, they're still like, oh I, I'm born with boobies. I, I'm born with this, I'm born with that. I I came from black people. I, I speak another language. Yeah, that's stuff you deal with in kindergarten. 
I know where you're fantasized by that when you're in kindergarten, but, you know, doesn't it kind of wear off when you're working on your Ph.D.? You know, it, there is, there's nothing without, you know, when you don't have faith, there's nothing really to talk about. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out and I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to eat. I'm going to get me a girl or boy or whatever and hope I like it. And, um... You know, try to have some fun. Maybe I'll jump out of a plane. Hopefully, I don't die. You know, it's just it, there's really I think about that last one. Okay, like for fun, you are so bored in your life that you'll risk your death. That that's where it eventually goes. And there's really no no point. I mean, you'll argue about what food you eat. You know, I'm a vegetarian. Oh, I like alcohol. I don't like alcohol. I you know, Everything's simple. Everything's stupid. Everything's getting old. What are you going to do? What kind of purpose do you have? But trust in Jesus. And I think about, you know, heaven a thousand years from now, two thousand years from now. I think about all the mysteries and stuff around the world. Whether we talk about science or whether we talk about spiritual gifts and angels and demons um this is the great adventure that's a christian rock song it it really is a, it, my life is an adventure and I, i've lived a different life and i'm just somebody of faith okay and i got a long way to go and sometimes in the past i was a lot more faithful than i am now you know but it's that faith that leads me on. Is when I'm trusting God that things start to work. That's how you live. I'm not just living by my faith. I'm living by the object of my faith. I'm living by Christ. I've got a God who's going to get me through this. And we're going to walk through every step. We're going to get through it. You know, it's a lot, ex it's a lot easier to exercise when you're on a team. Because you've got people who encourage you. Well, my own God encourages me to walk forward in my faith every time, even when I fail him. He's saying, get up. He's saying, abide in me. That's what it's about. Faith is awesome. Trusting God, it makes you happy. I mean, you want to be skeptical? What are you going to do? Mm. Fuck. Uh, it's all crap. If you do, 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 you know. Yeah, the, <laughs> you're really happy there, aren't you? No. Happy is he who trusts in the Lord. And that's over in Proverbs. See y'all later on Bible Smack.